gorgeous, gorgeous girls have Belladonna on their shelves. That's all I'm saying. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with the mid-year freakout book tag. Am I a little late because it is the second week of August? Yes. Do I care? No, this is the same track record as every year with me. I do film this every year. It's just always very late. So if you're interested in checking out the other years that I've done this, I'll leave the other ones down below. But this is a staple on booktube. It is a tag where you basically talk about your reading up to this point of the year. It was originally created by Chami and Ellie, so I'll also leave their links down below if you want to check out their videos. Not 100% sure if they're still up, but without further ado, let us get started. So the first question is, what is the best book that you've read for 2023 so far? And I have to go with Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldre. I am very late to this party, but I read this back in April, I believe, when I had my second bout of COVID, and it was exactly what I needed. This book is honestly like a warm hug. I love it so much. It basically follows Viv, who is an orc who has decided to put down all of her fighting from her past and open a little coffee shop in this little village. All the villagers come and it's just, it's so cute. I love it. If you haven't read it yet, where have you been? But also, please do read it because it is freaking adorable. I honestly don't know if any book could outrank this this year, but I mean, we do still have six months, I guess five now because it is August, but we'll see. I really don't think it's possible. Next is best sequel that you have read for 2023 so far, and mine is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I read this two months ago, I believe, and I just, I love these characters. I can't get enough of them. I'm so excited for the third book. And spoiler alert, the third book is going to be one of the answers for this tag, so stay tuned for that. I just can't get enough of Jax, and I will never ever get enough of Jax. He is just such a villain, but he's always said he's a villain, which I love about him. Like, he doesn't have a redemption arc. I don't think he's gonna have a redemption arc, nor do I want him to. He is just the perfect villain to me, and I just, I need more of him. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It didn't quite hit a 5 out of 5 stars for me, but it is the highest ranking sequel that I've read. I actually have only read like three sequels this year, so there wasn't much of a running, but I do also really love this book, so I'm not mad that it's the one that I'm choosing. Next is a new release that you have not read yet but want to, and I'm going with The Fox Glove King by Hannah Witten. I have had this since it came out. I've just been holding off. I don't really know why. It recently came in on audiobook at my library. I am off work for two weeks in August, so I'm hoping that this is actually going to be read because I do really want to read it, and the second book is releasing very soon, so I really do need to pick it up. I just don't want to hate it, you know? It's a gothic romance fantasy book, which I haven't read a lot of, but it sounds like something that would be right up my alley. It basically follows a woman who has the powers to raise the dead, and that lands her in the royal court, so I'm assuming shit is gonna go down, but I want to know what shit is going to go down. I just think it sounds so good. The next question statement, whatever you want to call it, is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and I actually have two for this. My first answer is the spoiler. It is the third book in the once Upon a Broken Heart series by Stephanie Garber. It's called A Curse for True Love. I don't know if it is the final book or if it's gonna be longer, but I need it in my hands because I need to know what happens to Jax and Evangeline Fox. You're left on such a cliffhanger in the second book, so I just, I need it in my hands. And then my second option for this is The Scarlet Veil by Shelby Mahern. I really liked the Serpent and Dove trilogy, so this is her next book. I believe that it also takes place in the Serpent and Dove world, it just isn't the same characters, or maybe there's gonna be cameos. I'm not sure. I think it's the same idea as the Once in Broken Heart and the Carval series where there's like cameos, but I don't know. But I love me some Shelby Mahern, so I need it in my hands. Next is Biggest Disappointment, and I am going with The Witch and the Vampire by Frances Flores. I was told that this was a sapphic Rapunzel retelling. Was it a sapphic Rapunzel retelling? No. It definitely was not. I, I was so disappointed by this, especially because this cover is so beautiful and it just let me down 
so hard. I think I gave it a two out of five stars and I was expecting to give it like at least a four. Didn't happen. If you have not read this, I would skip it because it is in fact not a sapphic Rapunzel retelling. Next is Biggest Surprise and I am going with R.I.P. by Charity B. Um, not because it was necessarily a good book, because the things and the topics that were covered in this were so surprising. Like, it's a dark ass book and I wasn't expecting it. It was very good, very addictive, but it is definitely a dark book. I can't really say too much about it without giving like the entire plot line away, but it basically follows these two siblings who have a very fucked up childhood and then their family dies and they're on the run and it is a lot. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Next is favorite new author. This can either be a debut or new to you. So I'm going with new to you. I read my first Talia Hibbert book, Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute, and I absolutely loved it. And this is her young adult novel. Apparently her adult novels are even better. So I definitely need to check out this author and her adult books. I've heard nothing but good things about this author. So I finally picked up her books. Obsessed. Love it. So I need more. Let me know down below what Talia Hibbert books I should read next because I do want to explore her writing but I, I just don't know where to start so let me know. Next up is Newest Fictional Crush and I am going with a book that I literally just finished this morning because it's fresh in my mind but I'm going with Caleb from Mixed Signals by BK Borison. This is the third book in the Love Like Farms series. I have not read the first two books in that series but I read this one because it's technically a standalone and um Caleb is a consent king. I love him. He's just such a little sunshine angel cinnamon roll and honestly he reminds me a lot of my boyfriend so that's probably why I like him so much. He was just so nice and concerned with Layla at all times and her well-being and just like how she was feeling which is very much like my boyfriend so I think I just saw him in him but I have the biggest crush ever. Next up is newest favorite character. I'm going with a book that I finished yesterday uh, because apparently I'm just going with things that are fresh in my mind but it is Cassian from Chaos and Flame by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. He's the Dragon High Prince Regent but he is so unhinged and I could never tell if he was playing playing a role of crazy person or if he was just going crazy. I loved him. He was such an interesting character. I couldn't get enough of him. I'm hoping that the second book in this series follows more of his backstory and we kind of get more information on him because every scene that he was in I was so intrigued by this man. I love him. Next up is a book that made you cry and I'm going with Forget Me Not by Alison Derrick. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I don't usually cry at books, so when a book can make me cry, it sticks in my head and it probably got a 5 out of 5 stars. This one. Ooh, the ending of this book made me sob. It is so good. This follows Stevie and Nora who fall in love. They live in a very small religious town so it's not exactly welcomed. So they keep their relationship a secret. But then one day Stevie has a fall and she bumps her head and forgets the last two years of her life. Which means she forgets Nora and Nora will stop at nothing to make her realize that they love each other. It's so good. It's so cute and I just... I sobbed. And not even before the relationship. I sobbed for a completely different reason to do with family and I just... Please read this book. It is so underrated and nobody talks about it and I want to scream about it with somebody so pick it up. Next up is a book that makes you happy and I'm going with Send in the Clowns by Molly Lakovich. This is a book by my friend Molly Lakovich. This book makes me happy because I'm just so proud of Molly because this is her like fifth or sixth book or something like that. I just love her writing. I think she's so talented and she's actually becoming like a successful author which makes me so happy and so proud and I just want everybody to buy her books. She also has a series called Bite Back which is like a vampire situation and then this one is really sexy clowns which sounds terrifying and they are, but it's so good. Her existence just makes me happy, so I just, I want everybody to buy her books, so I'm gonna leave her link down below. Please purchase them. They're so good, and I just want her to have all the support, because she deserves it. The next one is the most beautiful book that you have received or bought this year, and it took me a while to find this on my shelves because I haven't really gotten a lot of pretty books this year, but I'm going with Belladonna by Adeline Grace, not for this cover, although I do really like it, but mostly for, you know, the end pages. Gorgeous. But look at that. I just think it's 
so pretty. Purple is my favorite color, so that probably has something to do with it. But like, can, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous girls have Belladonna on their shelves. That's all I'm saying. I haven't even read this book, but I just want to stare at it all day long. And then the last final question, statement, whatever, is what are some books that you have not read yet but really need to get around to? And that would be literally my entire shelf. But I'm going to say my answer to this, because it's right in front of me, is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake because I own The Atlas Paradox as well. So I want to just binge the series because everybody loves it and I feel like I'm not on that bandwagon. So I really need to pick up this duology. This is actually on my August TBR and I have it in on my library app right now on audio so I'm hoping to listen to it on the plane to Florida if you didn't know I'm going to Florida in like 10 days or something ridiculous like that hopefully we're getting it done and then it can be in my wrap-up and you can all see my thoughts and hopefully they're good. All right, everybody. So that was the mid-year book freakout tag for 2023. Like I said before, if you are interested in, I believe I started this in like 2016. So if you want to see my videos from 2016 all the way to 2022, then check out the links down below. If not, then don't. <laughs> But let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!